I'm in the process of firing up the new Bitcoin mining farm. But until then, I still have some new miners coming in and I'm still just kind of running through how much they're earning, making sure that each individual miner checks out. Is it working properly? Making sure the fans work, everything like that. And with all that in mind, I've got a new miner in here today, especially to me. It's called the Bitmain Amp Miner T19. It looks very similar to the S19 miners, but well, it's obviously a different miner. It's got a different name. And today we're gonna break down how much money it earns, how much it costs, and a little bit on the difference between the T series of Bitcoin mining rigs and the S series, because well, they're actually pretty different. My name is Vosker on the Vosker on YouTube channel where we chase passive income dreams, especially with crypto mining. Hope you stick around. I'm a full-time crypto miner and I'm taking a very serious leap into Bitcoin mining. So, you know, I, I research this stuff all the time. I enjoy it. It's fun. I I'm passionate about it. And, you know, I'm pursuing it from a financial point of view as well. So just please understand, I'm not trying to like shill this to you or push it on you. You know, you do whatever you want to do. Uh, so let's kind of round out the, the recent, you know, finally a little bit of good news, right? Difficulty for mining Bitcoins fallen by 7.32%. And a lot of major Bitcoin miners are on the brink of bankruptcy, which, you know, sucks for them, but everyone else mining Bitcoin, well, it lessens the competition. So that's good for you. Good for me. So looking at the difficulty chart, I mean, look at this dip. This is really the most serious dip we've seen in a year. And it takes us back a few months. However, Bitcoin mining difficulty is still pretty high. With that difficulty adjustment though, it does help shoot up a lot of emissions for Bitcoin miners. It's up, you know, a couple million dollars per day. So in the last 24 hours, over $17 million of Bitcoin has been emitted, mined, released into the ecosystem, generated, which, you know, again, just makes it more interesting and, and more lucrative, right? So we're going to be focusing on another Bitmain ant miner. I, I know it's kind of boring, redundant. You know, there's so many ant miners. They all look the same. Look at all these different models. You know, it's, it's tiring. But we're going to be looking at a miner that's not currently available on here and it has a low price tag. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the Bitmain Ant Miner T19. And thanks to Coin Mining Central for helping us source that. We have got a, a link down in the video description below. You can use Coin Mining Central, get a discount with our link and code. And it's not just about, you know, pushing a miner affiliate sale on you and things like that. Right, you know, you can order from wherever you want. That's also why I showed Bitmain. Keep in mind, you'll pay tariffs with Bitmain. You will also have to KYC, you know, complete a full identity verification with them. It's an invasive process, not the case with Coin Mining Central. Uh, but, you know, regarding tariffs, I would investigate each miner individually. They ship from throughout the world. You know, your situation may vary and it's worth contacting them. We also linked up with them to give away 10 miners this month. So I highly encourage you to participate because this is a pretty cool and exciting giveaway, in my opinion, in a pretty negative time recently. So, you know, we're just trying to have some fun and, you know, bring some good energy and vibes here. So jumping into the mining pool, we can see that I've been mining Bitcoin last 10 minutes, looking at an hourly rate. And then we break it out day by day. Had a couple of different miners here, downtime on this pool, and then hook this mining rig up. And that's an annoying notification. I apologize for that one. So jumping into the rig, we get the Ant Miner T19, real time hash rate 89 terahash a second. Uptime over five days here, mining on via BTC, also tested on F2 pool and slush pool here. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. 
There's not really things that you adjust in Bitcoin miners with the stock Bitmain firmware. Logging in is very easy. Watch our electricity guide and our how to set up an ASIC miner guide if you need a primer on getting started with this stuff. But you know, I log in with the IP address, copy and paste my pool and username, off to the races. And uh, just like that, you're earning Bitcoins. Well, really Satoshis, but you know, we all dream of mining Bitcoins and Bitcoins and Bitcoins. So how much are we earning? These are our profits per day. And you can see that I was earning about 30,000 Satoshis. It's a micro unit of Bitcoin, right? So 0.0003027. Again, not the fun way to talk about it. Uh, however, yesterday, earned a significantly higher portion at 32529 Satoshis, that micro unit of Bitcoin. So um, the hash rate was a negligible difference, but we had an adjustment in difficulty. We haven't even had the full 24 hours come in, you know, to my understanding there, which is, you know, exciting in a way. So the profit should be even higher uh, tomorrow for me. But let's take this profit. And we'll go over to CoinGecko. So in the last 24 hours, I've earned about five and a half dollars mining Bitcoin. Sweet. And we take the earnings from before. We'll just take this one data point. So earnings up about 40 cents, right? I mean, pretty much a straight 40 cents. And it's probably going to go up a little bit more. That's a substantial increase because we're almost up 10 percent on the earnings for this miner in Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's trading at a low price historically. It is down 75.5% from its all-time high. And, you know, now is the time to mine, to stack, to hodl, to build, if possible. But the electricity bills don't go away. And it depends on your personal situation and what kind of cash reserves you're sitting on to be able to float those expenses, those electricity bills, right? So this miner's earning $5.5 a day. And... It's projected to earn four and a half dollars a day with this mining profitability calculator. So we're up an entire dollar on that, which is cool to see. And at five cents per kilowatt hour, you'd be projected to make 70 cents after you pay the electricity bill. You bump that up to 10 cents, you're actually projected to lose three dollars a day. You go up even higher, something like 12 cents, and there's actually not a profitable Bitcoin miner for you to run at a higher residential electricity rate. And, and at 12 cents, that, that's a decent electricity rate. Like people out, out there paying 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, make sure you understand that. Keep in mind, we're also getting a dollar more than we're projected to get here. So we would be at minus 359. And at 10 cents, we'd be losing $2 a day and barely breaking even with the most efficient miner that they have in this calculator, which would be the S19 XP. Whew. So, you know, it's it's, it's treacherous times. Um, it, It's tough times. So let's kind of break down a few things. So the S series, as you saw in that chart, versus the T series. You know, why would you ever get a T series miner? Well, it's the same reason you would ever get a T series ant miner, Bitcoin miner, right? This is an ASIC miner. It's an application specific integrated circuit miner. It mines one algorithm, the SHA-256 mining algorithm, which would be Bitcoin's mining algorithm, okay? And the T19s are basically less efficient and cheaper miners. You run the numbers and you look at your electricity rate and if you've got dirt cheap electricity, these cheaper miners could be a better buy for you. But, you know, to play the critic here, you end up buying less efficient miners. They got a lower lifespan, long term, you know, just uh, for being competitive, right? Because that's really based on efficiency. And from there, you also contribute a bit to waste, right? You know, ideally, we operate with the most efficient miners possible out here, um, you know, because otherwise we kind of like a dirty arms race. And that's not normally my point of view. And that's my not, not my objective with these things. But it is something to kind of understand and think about. And, you know, it's like buying a gas guzzler car versus an efficient one. And, you know, I've got a JDM car that gets 30 miles per gallon. I also have a Cobra with a V8 that gets like 10 miles per gallon when I'm having any fun. Um, so I like to think, you know, I like to enjoy both. <laughs> you know, you're doing the errands, you're doing the commute, get some efficiency out there. But you want to get down dirty, have a little bit of fun? 
deserve that too. Uh, but not really the point of focus exactly, but I don't know, maybe you vibe with the example. Um, so, you know, I think that in this era, the T-Series is kind of outdated. It's kind of antiquated. I was actually surprised to see them come out with T-19 models uh, for Bitcoin miners. But, you know, I'm addicted to mining and all these different mining rigs. I had to have one. It's the cheapest Bitcoin miner of the you know recent generation that I own. Um, for me, it's not profitable to run. I lose money with it. And basically at a price of $2,000 to $2,300. Um, well, if I lose money, I'll, I'll never break even. If you have a better electricity rate, it could be a good play for you. Um, maybe you're limited just by how much money you have to spend on a rig and maybe a more efficient rig that could cost a couple grand more is just not in the budget then this could be a good option for you it depends you know if you're going from a hobbyist point of view a business point of view what your electricity rates are your goals here you know you really just you know i hate to like sound so simple here but like you really just got to run the numbers and uh, what's worth it for you may not be worth it for someone else the fact of the matter is is that the bitmain amp miner t19 is a good miner it works well it, you know it it, it, it works it, it, it's a it's a machine it's a tool and, and it, it gets the job done no issues here nothing weird automated fan control right now the garage is pretty cool so it's running uh you know with a pretty slow fan speed given the fact that it's consuming over 3,000 watts you know when it's hot this is a very loud miner make sure you understand just how loud ASIC miners can be in hot environments but you also heard me in the intro it's not that loud in a cooler environment as most miners are that have automated regulated fans but the earth rotates and the seasons change and so do the temperatures so make sure you understand that and keep that in mind in the colder months it's always good to remind yourself that you can mine bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies and get the passive benefit of recirculating that heat throughout your house, your garage, your basement, whatever. It's a great way to get a you know, dual use. Your heater doesn't make any Bitcoin, but this mining rig could. So, something to keep in mind. That's all I've got today. You know, just kind of basic bare bones overview of the miner. It's good, it works, it's fine. Uh, it's less efficient and it's pretty cheap. And, uh, you know, it's I got nothing bad to say about it other than I wish it was more efficient. But if it was more efficient, then it would just be one of the S19 models. So, hey, as always, thanks for watching. And a quick video clip from the cutest pup in the world. That's going to be our CMO, our chief mining officer here at the Boss Coin YouTube channel. That's going to be Tails, the tickliest, the cutest, our Shiba in it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.